I forgot my keys. So I used to hit like this all the time by myself. And I did it because I was addicted to the process. I was addicted to knowing that if I put more effort into this craft, I got better results on the field. This was true. Like I would work on middle tees, I'd work on outside tees, I'd work on inside tees. I basically worked the whole plate and I would imagine myself actually hitting the baseball um, in specific areas on the field. But one thing it didn't help me with was handling pressure. And not the pressure that you get when you just step up to the box in the first inning of a ball game, but ninth inning type of pressure. Two outs, guy on first, guy on third. What are you going to do? And that's extremely hard to deal with. Side note, I started this uh, vlog a little late, so I have to move cages because a lesson is getting into this cage. How's it going, guys? All right, we're back in a new cage. So back to the conversation. And I never really knew how to handle pressure as a player, especially in those situations. Like growing up, I was a big Michael Jordan fan, Scottie Pippen, um, Derek Jeter, and also Kurt Warner. And I've come to appreciate Tom Brady. In today's reading, there was a sentence that made me stop and think, which is labeling emotions calms the nerves. Talking about emotions is not really a thing in sports. We would talk about breathing, calming the nerves, but never emotions. Like, what are you feeling in that specific moment? And I wonder if labeling would help that. Like actually labeling, man, I feel nervous. I feel scared. Because then maybe then you can cope with it and it'll actually calm down the nerves. And there's a lot of pressure in this game. Anxi you cannot escape anxiety when it comes to playing the game of baseball. Like this tool right here. There's a lot that goes on in your mind with this thing. Am I good enough? Am I just wasting time on this thing? How many reps do I actually need to produce the result that I want to produce? There's just a lot of thoughts and it's a mental grind on just spending time on this thing and this. And it becomes more than just a game. Like it becomes your life. But there's something noble about pursuing something. The thing that I keep on battling with in my head is if I was able to label my emotions, I think I would have been a better player. I'll never know what that feeling is like because I don't play this game anymore. I do like to hit off the tee every once in a while. But it's one of those things that I can use in an everyday life where if I end up having an argument or I feel frustrated or feel sad, coming down and just labeling what it actually is. To cap this vlog off, I want to read something from this book to kind of put a huge bow around it and put everything in perspective. To give this reading context, this is about a little girl who's speaking with her dad and her older sister just had a birthday party and she opened up all her presents, all the guests have left, and this little girl is complaining that she doesn't have the presents that her older sister has. You seem sad, are you sad? Is what the girl's dad said. The little girl nodded, still angry too. The dad continued, I think I know why. You're sad because Allie's gotten all the presents. You only got one. The little girl nodded again. You want the same number and you can't have it. And that's unfair and that makes you sad. The dad seemed to be pouring it on. Whenever someone 
gets something I want and I don't, I get sad too. Then there was silence. Then the dad said the line most characteristic of a verbalizing parent. We have a word for that feeling, honey. We call it being jealous. You want Allie's present and you couldn't have them. You were jealous. She cried softly, but was beginning to calm down. Jealous, she whispered. Yep, the dad replied, and it's an icky feeling. I've been jealous all day, she replied, nestling under daddy's big strong arms. This big hearted father is good at labeling his feelings and teaching his daughter to label hers. At that point, the daughter was able to calm her nerves down because she could label what that emotion was. Now I know that as a three-year-old and we're talking about athletes, but this happens to be for adults too. Because in this sentence, which is where this whole vlog stemmed from, verbalizing has a soothing effect on the nervous system of children, adults too. Thus, the brain rule, labeling emotions, calms big feelings. And I'll continue with this one last thing, this last piece of, of advice that this book has given me. The point of this training is to increase your awareness. You can be aware of your emotions without being highly emotive. The benefits of that is you know when you're experiencing an emotion, you can identify the emotion quickly and can verbalize it on demand. You can recognize the same emotion in other people just as quickly. That is a massively unfair advantage that you'll have over anyone else when you're able to manage your emotions and see emotions out amongst the environment that you're in. And that includes high pressure situations. Performing under pressure, whether it's me or anybody else, is the same. You know, I have the same pressures as anyone else. There's time, there's performance, there's financial. I mean, there are, you know, there's deadlines. Well, what I find fascinating is the interpretation of the stimuli. So I was watching the Olympics this last summer Olympics. And what I realized is it's not that they're not nervous, it's their interpretation of what's happening in their bodies. I mean, what, what happens when you're nervous, right? Your heart rate starts to go, you're, you know, you sort of get a little tense, you get a little sweaty, right? You, you have expectation of what's coming, and we interpret that as, I'm nervous. Now, what's the interpretation of excited? Your heart rate starts to go, you become, you're anticipating what's coming, right? You get a little sort of like tense. It's all the same thing, it's the same stimuli. Except these athletes, these, these Olympic quality athletes, have learned to interpret the stimuli that the rest of us would say is nervous as excited. They all say the same thing. No, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. 